Okay, let's learn about pointillism. For pointillism, it's ideal to use a fine tip brush, or you can use a fan brush, or you can also use the edge of a flat brush. So pointillism is essentially painting with repeated dots to form images. I find it very fun and meditative actually because it's really easy and you kind of just have to focus on repeating the dots. When holding your brush, it helps if you hold it upright and you're basically stabbing the paper. It's a press and lift motion. Make sure not to linger too long on the paper or your dots will get kind of smushed. And also don't hold your paintbrush sideways too much or you might get lazier marks that are more of like a line shape. I want to quickly mention that many people, including myself, often get stippling and pointillism mixed up. So they're very similar in that they both use repeated dots. However, stippling is often done in one color, black and white, and it's usually in pen or ink. Whereas pointillism uses many colors and it's typically done in paint. In this class, I'm only using brown because it's just a quick demo, but in a normal painting, if I was using pointillism, I would have multiple colors. So just remember that stippling is black and white, usually done in pen, and then pointillism is multiple colors, usually done in paint. As I'm showing here, you can vary the size of your dots by pressing a bit harder with your paintbrush. Or you can use more water or more medium to get, you know, more watery, flowy dots. You can also change up the size of your brush if you want smaller or bigger dots. So pointillism was created in the 1880s in Paris by George Seurat and Paul Signac. This movement came after Impressionism, and it was meant to be more of a scientific approach to art. Van Gogh also used pointillism in his art as well. With pointillism, there's an optical effect on the eye, so when you're standing farther away, all of the dots will visually blend together and they'll create larger images and colors, but then up close, you can see the individual dots. You're not blending the colors in your painting as you would traditionally. You're just repeating so many dots that eventually they look blended from far away. For the fan brush, I like to get all sides dipped in the paint for like an even layer. The fan brush is kind of like a cheat way to do pointillism. You will see the fan brush shape as you go to put your dots. So it's not as nice looking as the individual dots in my opinion, but it's really good for like trees or bushes or, you know, some kind of like quick landscape. And it's a lot faster to use the fan brush. You'll notice that Bob Ross uses this technique a lot. He always has his fan brush. And remember, you don't have to go in one direction or one motion. You can move all around, change the direction, you know, create circles or shapes with your dots. And just a few tips, you know, never let the paint become too runny or you'll really lose the detail of the dots. If you want to have multiple colors, you could dip your brush in multiple colors, like maybe two colors would be good, and then the colors would already be blended on the same brush, or you could do a layer of color, let it dry, and then go over with another color. Another tip is to always step back frequently from your image to, you know, assess how things are going, because with pointillism, it's really an optical effect from far away, so make sure you're always stepping back. Another tip is if you have any like dried out old brushes, particularly like animal hair because they're stiffer, those actually work really well for pointillism because you can, you know, lightly dip the brush in paint and all those stiff, you know, bristles will actually create little dots. And I'm just sketching out a quick, ugly little apple here. It looks like a pumpkin, but it's actually an apple. Just kind of showing how you can, you know, place the dots closer together or farther apart for, you know, different shades. For darker areas in your painting, you can add more dots close together, even overlapping them. And then for lighter areas, you can leave more space between the dots and have less dots overall. And then also for darker areas, you could use, for example, the complementary color on the color wheel. So if you had an area with red dots and then you went over them with green dots, the opposite color, that would sort of give the illusion of like a shadow in like a darker area. 
And then with a lighter area, maybe you want to do like yellow dots or, you know, a lighter color and then maybe don't use the complementary color on top because that will automatically dull and darken it. All right, well, that is about it for pointillism. I hope you learned some fun tips and tricks. Thank you.